Hello, Tracy from Salem. Coming back with this piece that I was working on in my last video um, around uh, or inspired by K3N's video on the chain, the, uh, sorry, the eyelet stitch. Um, so you can see that some of my eyelets are entirely uh, cut out. Some, it's just the top layer that was cut out. And so you can see the backing fabric um, and then some of them are not cut out at all. Um, and so I did a variety of all of them with a variety of threads. Um, some of those threads variegated, some where I actually just used to, you know, went around twice with one color and then the third time with a different color. Um, whereas this is like a variegated thread. So a, a variety. Um, and I did a little chain stitch and a little couching. Um, and so now I am going to do a, a stitch that I have no idea what it's called. Um, there's a lot of people on YouTube that do and teach this stitch. Um, I'm thinking of, let's see, for example, um, I'm not going to say her name correctly because it's a Dutch name. And so I just apologize in advance for butchering her name. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's M Miriam, um, M-A-R-J-A-M, I think, because it's Dutch. And her last name is, I, I cannot, I cannot even guess as, as to how it's pronounced. G-I-E-L-E-N, I believe it's called, uh, or spelled. Um, and, but she's not the only one doing this stitch. She, she happens to, to do it a lot, but uh, um, lots of people are doing this stitch. I don't know what the name of it is. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> um, and what it, it, it creates a kind of a very f funky sea anemone sort of a feeling. Now, let's see. Uh, so I'm not a stitch teacher, and so I'm not exactly sure how to how to tell you to do this. So I'm right-handed, obviously. Am I going to go to my right or left? Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a base of stitches. They do not have to be, you know, like a, a tower, I should say, a tower of stitches. They don't have to be um, perfectly equidistant. In fact, I I don't enjoy that, that kind of a, I don't enjoy doing that kind of a, um, a look. I am extremely impressed by people who have those devoted skills and I have a fantasy about going to the Royal School of Needlework but I don't think I would go down very well there because I, I suspect that they require an enormous amount of consistent precision. Uh, that's what they're about and that is not my um, zone. Um, I, I, I neither am very good at doing that, uh, but I certainly don't like doing that. I mean, sometimes I will get super, um, fussy with myself, but, uh, you know, I've spent most of my life, I think I said in the last video, most of my life being a type A first child. And now that I am a gloriously menopausal woman, I say screw that. I mean, there's just gotta be some advantages to menopause, right? So you can see I'm building up like a tower of these stitches. Um, at the moment, they are pretty um, even just to get started, but I will, I will put in less and less effort into that because I want it to actually look interesting as well, right? And the idea is that I'm gonna kind of build up and then I'm going to branch out. Um, at what moment I'm gonna do that, I could not say. But the one thing I am trying to be precise about is to not have any spaces between these stitches. They don't have to be the same length going this way, but I want to um, keep them quite close to each other. So I am trying to be precise about that. 
And um, this also is a variegated thread. So now I've just started to go a little bit longer on the left-hand side. Um, this also is a variegated thread. It's a it's a Sue Spargo Wonderfill size uh, eight pearl cotton. Isn't that God? Isn't that just gorgeous? Gorgeous. Uh, so yeah, another thing I was trying to do here in this piece is to play with color. Um, I definitely, part of my stitching journey has been to get better about color play and, you know, so, so learning that color palette, the color wheel, and then as you can see, it's getting, I'm starting to make it not all uniform, uniform across, um, <clears throat> is to learn that color wheel uh, so that I can really play with it. I fully believe that um, people who know the rules backwards and forwards break them better than people who don't know the rules. Um, which is not to be elitist and say that people have to, f you know, follow some stitching rules. I think I just already talked about how I am not interested in that uh, in the sense of this kind of uh, perfectionism. Um, but I, I believe, and, and I think there's certain places where it's even more important to know the rules well before you break them. Um, and I think color is probably one of those places to really understand um yeah complementary and tertiary and well, i don't know a bunch of other words that i can't throw at you right now uh so by no means am i a color mistress um but it is something that i decided like you need to know this better so that when you are quote unquote breaking color rules, you're doing it well, um, if that makes any sense. So, I mean, I, 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 it's not like I've, you know, taken classes and whatever, but I've, I, I got myself a color wheel. I spend time <laughs> looking at it and thinking about it. And um, with this piece, like I had to say that there's no way a couple of years ago that I would have put blue and peach together and peach and orange. Oh my gosh. Like when I was growing up, peach and orange was like, well, you know, I was about to say it was totally against the rules, but actually that's not true because I grew up in a place where Lily Pulitzer was queen and Lily Pulitzer loved peach and orange. So what am I even talking about? I don't know. So anyway, as you can see, I've started to create um, movement in, it's not just a solid block up, I've started to create movement. Um, I've actually gone a little bit farther than maybe I was intending, because I was chatting away. Gone up a little farther than I was intending before I branch out, but I'm definitely gonna branch out now. And so maybe I'm just gonna, instead of going all the way across, I'm just going to go halfway across here and I'm going to go out a little more to the left so that I can kind of start to curve around here. I'm so amused by what I just said about Lily Pulitzer. <laughs> I got to tell you that like I did not enjoy the whole Lily Pulitzer scene when I was growing up. And it was a big, big scene where I grew up. Um, and now I, now that I've been studying the color wheel more, I actually appreciate the ways in which she boldly played with color. Um, when it comes to clothing, so, if you've seen stuff on this channel before, um, you know that I use a lot of color in my work, um, that I really love the bright colors, and particularly blues and purples. Um, I could not stand pink my entire growing up, loathed and detested pink, because Lily Pulitzer was the queen of hot pink. 
it, I mean, hot pink was the, right? I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> hot pink was the thing, and I could not stand it. Um, and, you know, if you look at my wardrobe, it's basically just all, like, black and blue, uh, black and purple. I I do not wear a lot of colorful stuff. I, I've tried branching out in the last year or two. Um, but mostly I prefer my decoration to be jewelry, my personal decoration of my body. I like jewelry more than clothes. I don't really care about clothes. But in my work, I do use a lot of colors. Um, but I've only just started to use pink. I've, I'm only, I'm like a recovering pink person, <laughs> pink hater recovering pink hater so you can see I uh, so let's see I've got I've got a little I missed a little spot in there that I'll that I'll go back to but you can see I've I've branched off here now and then I'll come back and I'll branch and so the idea is to do that sort of all the way around um this piece yeah so I'll do a little more but I think this is just a short video uh, I wish I knew what the stitch was called. I wonder if it even has a name. Maybe it doesn't even have a name. I don't know. Um, but I thought I would just share sort of the next phase of this piece. Um, so it seems like stitch alongs are like the thing now. Right? How many stitch alongs are there right now going on? So I want to curve, I want to curve this again this way, going this way. So now I'm maybe gonna keep going in, I'm gonna keep going in this hole for a couple of different stitches. So while I bring this side up, I'll keep going in this hole so that it starts to curve around this way. That's my intention anyway. That's what I think I should do. <laughs> um so yeah, so there I went in the same hole, and now I'm going to go in the same hole again, but go a little bit higher up on the left-hand side. Um, now I'm going to go in that same hole again and come up a, a little more on the left-hand side. So you see now it's it's starting to curve a little bit. So yeah, stitch alongs, man, they are everywhere. I really just like, what, two, three years ago, maybe there was, you know, there were stitching videos, but it was like for the diehard fiber artists. Now, man, everybody's got a stitch along. Um, I think that, uh, so there's the K3N, there's, um, um, Ann Wood has one. I don't know. I don't think she does videos actually. I don't think she's on YouTube. But she has um, a daily uh, fifteen minutes a day, maybe or something. She she has she her project. So it's Anne A N N Wood, and she she did this last year. Uh, and I don't think it runs the entire year, but maybe it's like one of those hundred day things, um, where she makes a book, a stitch book, and. And, the, and, and you can, you know, stitch along with her. Um, so she does that. And um, gosh, who else? Well, of course, I, these are the people I think maybe started it. Well, I, don't, I shouldn't say that. Maybe not started it. But like really got all of us going. What are uh, Roxy and Sarah of Roxy's Journal Creations. Roxy's Creations. Uh, possibly not saying that right. But I think it's Roxy's Creations by Rachel and Roxy's Creations by Sarah are the two YouTube channels. And I did their first journal of stitchery, Stitch Along, uh, it's a couple years ago now. Or, yeah, I think it was during the pandemic still. Um, and it's one of the things that really kind of really propelled me forward in my stitching. Um, 
so they've got one. Uh, I mean, they're, they're just, they are all over the place. Um, and that's, I don't know, that seems like a really a good thing that we have, you know, um, embroidery in America. So now I'm going to go in the same hole a couple more times to kind of, again, curve it this way. And then go up higher on the left-hand side. Uh, how am I getting that in a way that you can see it? Um, so I'm going to go on this side, I'm going to go in the same hole that I've gone in. And then I'm going to come out a little bit higher on the left. Um, when I first kind of really started getting into this, uh, it was really hard to find stuff um, because embroidery is not as big in America as it is in, um, in the British Isles. I mean... There is a lot of stitch stuff in the British Isles. And um, yeah, and there just a couple of years ago, there just was like nothing happening over here. And so it was, it was hard to find teachers. Um, I went, to, uh, not this past summer, but the summer before, I went to a summer retreat uh, at Madeline Island with Sue Spargo and I had been stitching for a while and uh you know kind of loosely stitching um had taken some classes with here's a great teacher Julie Booth um and you can find her on Instagram oh I can't <laughs> I was like looking around for my phone but of course phone is up here um I'll put I'll put a link to Julie Booth in the in the comments section or in, uh, sorry in the box you know below here um took a took a couple sit classes with her online during the pandemic and she really got me started um but it was not she was not doing kind of the fancy stitches so then I went and did a retreat with with Sue Spargo it, at Madeline Island in Wisconsin, which was insane to get to, but absolutely amazing. Um, I'm going to branch off again here. Let's see. What I should have done was I should have branched off here. Because I'm talking too much <laughs> and I'm not paying attention to my stitching. Um, and that was like, that was a hardcore, um, hardcore learning a lot of like the formal, amazing stitches. Um, her book, her stitch book, uh, this is her stitch book and it's just chock full of, you can probably see on the cover, like all these fancy stitches you learn all this stuff um and and so this was kind of a, a a master class and I was like at ground zero so you you had to know how to do all the stitches in the book to go to the master class <laughs> um and this is just a testament to how stitching has overtaken my life was that I was like, yeah, okay. And I spent like two months with that, three months with that book, just learning every single stitch so that I could go to this masterclass retreat of hers. And, um, and have an amazing, amazing time, which I did. Um, So now I'm gonna make I'm gonna start on the other. So I went this way a little bit, and now I'm gonna start on this branch going this way. So I go back down to where I stitched about halfway across, and I pick up the other side of it. Um, yeah. So I'm just 
you know, blathering on about my stitch journey. But that was, even though Sue Spargo is 100% not my style, right? She does, a, she does a lot of kind of, it's very like folk art kind of stuff. And also like the very fancy, fancy stitches. Um, and that's not in general my, my style. I mean, not the fancy stitches, but the kind of the folk art part of it. Um, but that was okay. I mean, so for one thing, it was the first time I was in a room with a lot of other women who really loved stitching and who did a lot of stitching. Um, but also, uh, yeah, it was just, it was just an, an intense five days of stitching, like whatever, probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours a day. Um, God, it was just, as my dad would say, I was a pig in shit. It was amazing. <laughs> um, and it just took me it just, it just was kind of a great leap forward for me as a stitcher, uh, you know, which I don't proclaim to be an amazing stitcher, but considering that when the pandemic started, I had like zero, you know, I, I would stitch in my, in the books that I made, I made a lot of junk journals and I would stitch in them, but I wasn't really a stitcher. So yeah. Those were some formative, formative experiences. All right. Well, you get the idea. This is what I'm going to do on the rest of this piece is like this kind of, I don't know. It kind of looks like something about these guys that kind of look like cells to me. And now these are like nerves or, or it's, or it's going to be some kind of sea monster. I don't, I don't know. But I'm having a good time. I hope it was useful to see a little bit of that. I love, look at the way that's stitching up that variegated thread. That's just so yummy. Um, so yeah, and I think uh, I think All Creatures Great and Small is on tonight. So I'll have just like this very like wholesome evening of, of uh, Masterpiece Theater and, and stitching. Have a good one.